Hello everyone and welcome back. Sorry, it's been a bit of a hiatus since I made the last one. Today we're talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp is the definition of a filler Marvel movie. It's very easy going, it's designed to just be fun, so there's nothing more underneath it. It's mildly entertaining, it's not as compelling as the first Ant-Man film was, which was really refreshing at the time. In this one, Scott Lang feels very dumbed down. Like in the first one, he has some general smarts about him, he breaks into Hank Pym's vault and everything. But here, he kind of seems like he's a bumbling idiot. Like whatever character growth he had, he has now regressed. To keep this character in a bubble that Marvel likes. As well as Paul Rudd giving a very solid performance, Michael Pena also returns and he's also great to watch again. As far as villains, Ghost is very underwhelming. The movie had an opportunity to make a very sympathetic character, but ultimately it ends up falling flat. The character had good setup, but poor execution. This movie came out a while ago, so I feel like I'm free to dabble into spoilers, but Janet Van Dyne, when she returns, Michelle Pfeiffer, our queen, when she returns, this is where all the plot holes of Marvel really start unraveling and no one really gave much of a shit anymore. So Janet Van Dyne has been stuck in the quantum realm for 20, 30 years. I'm not sure how long exactly, but when she's found, she's got perfect makeup on. She's seems like she hasn't been stuck somewhere without resources forever. They, they could have just had a single line saying, hey, she was here and this is what she had or something. But, how did she eat for a couple of decades? Nothing is explained, nothing is even touched on. How is she not insane from just the amount of isolation she's had? She just waltzes back into the picture with no problems. When she gets back, she walks up to Ghost and just kind of fixes her phasing problem and that's never really explained. This movie is very fast paced and it's very streamlined. And that's usually a good thing, but they've done it here to sacrifice the narrative so they could just keep things going. Uh, Walton Goggins is here. I forgot he was even in this movie. Which is strange because if there's a big name and one I know from Tarantino movies, you'd think I would remember. But his inclusion in this film, he's basically here just so Ant-Man and the Wasp can throw around bad guys at the end. I sound like I'm bashing this movie. It is very entertaining. There's nothing that's that bad about it. Like, I don't hate this at all. But it's the definition of a filler Marvel movie. There's nothing more underneath that. Nothing underneath the surface of, hey, here's a joke, hey, here's a joke, we're going here, we're going here, we're punching some bad guys, that's it. So the film's called Ant-Man and the Wasp. The Wasp is in it too, and she is a real highlight of the film. She also helps and does match the star power of Paul Rudd. I love the chemistry between the two. It's very easy to watch. Now, a lot of people don't, but I like Randall Park, especially in this. I love him from a YouTube video called The Broom Shakalaka, it's incredible. Most of you might know him as the guy that played Kim Jong-un in the interview, but I like his inclusion here, I, f I find him funny. I love the joke with the magic at the start of the film, but I do have to admit, once you get towards the end of the film, his shtick does start to get a little old. The colour grading in this film, I wanted to mention it, it has that concrete look like Civil War, and it's just not very nice to look at. The film just feels so lazy, like there's so many things they could have fixed with just one quick change to that and a sentence here to explain this. It could have been fixed so easy, but it wasn't and this is the film we got. If you liked the first Ant-Man, you're probably going to enjoy this one too. It's a pretty straightforward movie, there's not much to it, and it is, it's fun. For me, Ant-Man and the Wasp is going to get a 6 out of 10. Fill a Marvel movie. Not bad, even though it might have sounded like I was bashing on it a lot, it's not bad. But there's nothing special here at all. Here's hoping the third Ant-Man movie can be not the exact same thing again, except we've got Kang as well. So that's my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Next up is Captain Marvel. Ooh, I gotta watch this one again. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to hang around and see that, or dropping a like on the video. It helps me out a lot. If you've made it all the way through to the end of the video, you're a bloody legend, and hopefully I can see you guys next time when I'm talking about Captain Marvel. Bye, guys.